and welcome to No Such Thing as a Bad Movie Podcast. I'm April Atmansky, and I'm here today with... Jocelyn DeClue! And Colin Cunningham. And uh, today we have a fever. Vegas fever. <laughs> is, that what, is that what it is? Uh, for a movie that, like, Vegas is in the title, it feels like we're barely in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, like, honestly, it could have taken place anywhere, except for the fact that they go to the Hoover Dam. But, like, <laughs> there's no gambling. They do there there's a couple times. There's no Hoover, casinos. Hoover Dam, where it will take you three minutes to hit the bottom <laughs> if you jump. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this movie is called Las Vegas City of Dreams? I think it's just Vegas, Vegas. Oh, City of yeah. Dreams. Vegas City of Dreams. Justin... Why did we watch this movie? And where did you find this movie? Uh, I just saw it on someone's letterbox list. A long, it's been on my watch list forever. And uh, the person was like, this is very bad. It's a vanity project of the director and his wife. And mm. I was like, oh, okay. That was like fun. Let's check it out. It's also from 2001. Uh, uh-huh. a, a, a funny time for movies, especially if they have special effects. Well, this feels yeah. very much like a pilot of a TV series that never existed. Yeah. Didn't you, didn't well, you think so? I, uh, yeah. I was totally thinking it felt like a TV show the whole time. And I was like, well, this is clearly not theatrical. This is a made-for-TV movie of some kind. Mm-hmm. Or did it air? Or, or or what? DTV, maybe? And I've never heard of this director before, Lorenzo Dumani. Uh, he has a uh, filmography of stuff that I have never heard of before. Some of them, ver- <laughs> and like all across, like he made a monster movie. He made a movie called Mad About You as his first film. He has yeah, one log on Letterbox, and that's it. I do, I do love his like uh, IMDb like summary. It's like he got into the <laughs> the entertainment industry when his family financed uh, Francis Ford Coppola's The Cotton Club. Wow! So he's like rich guy. <laughs> Yeah, he comes from a rich family. It's like, okay. So the poster for his film, The Misery Brothers, has the tagline, forget about Mary, put the water boy on the bench, lock up Jake and Elwood, the Misery (laughs) Brothers are in town. (laughs) What? What? That's way too long for a tagline. It says, the Misery Brothers, and then over that title, it says, Y2K. So wait, it's (laughs) Misery Brothers 2000? (laughs) Is that a and comedy? It stars uh, Pat Morita and Abe Vigoda. Oh, oh my no. god! <laughs> and it looks uh. like on the fuzzy poster that it also stars uh, Noam Chomsky, but I don't think <laughs> that he stars in this movie. <laughs> that would be weird. Well, this movie, uh, there are uh, a couple of there's a handful of, of uh, major actors. Okay, yeah, mid- I was major mid-level, actors. Mid-level. John Taylor. Yeah. Well, we got Paul Winfield. You got Joe Don Baker. Joe Don Baker, who's oh. actually in this way more than I expected. Uh, well, John Taylor. He spends a lot of it from a hospital bed. Okay, yes. we'll get to that, but it led to one of the funny. I was crying laughing at one point. <laughs> <laughs> like, I couldn't stop laughing. Uh, yeah, we got John Taylor, the bad guy in this. So I didn't know who this was. I had to no, look it up. No, we didn't no. know until half. I looked him up halfway through the movie. I was like, oh shit, he's from Duran Duran. He's the bassist from Duran Duran. And uh, I was like trying to show April. I'm like, yeah, that, we're looking at old pictures of Duran Duran. It's impossible to tell them apart. They all look the same. They all, yeah. <laughs> they all have like any of them could have been. They him. could like, be the perfect criminal. And, yeah, it's like they yeah. all have like frosted tips and feathered hair Long and hair, like because yeah. I was looking. And this movie's posted on YouTube by someone named Kathy Mosley. Uh, and I was like, 108,000 views? How? Holy uh, shit. Yeah. Also, you said this is a vanity project between for, uh, of who? <laughs> of, uh, one of the actors is the wife of the director. Oh, do we know oh, which one? The one that sings, I believe. Oh. Um, she's like yeah. a uh, soap opera actress. Okay. And also she's bad. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, they're all bad. But Oh, I, I believe haven't... that. Isn't she the one who turned to Christianity? Well, oh. she kept singing about God in the movie. Mm-hmm. Like her 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 Vegas act was like religious. Yeah, which it was kind made of no sense. I was kind of waiting for. I was like, oh no, is this a Christian movie? Because they mentioned God like a bunch of times. Yeah, but it doesn't really go there. It doesn't go anywhere. Thank God. There's new nude, there's a nude, <laughs> there's nudity, nudity in this. Did you guys? Um, okay, so the movie starts. Fountainhead Filmworks presents, and I was and like, like oh, "Oh boy, Fountainhead!" Oh, and oh, then God. it says a Howard Rourke inspiration, a Howard Rourke inspiration, and I was like, "Is he a producer?" Wait a minute, that's the name of the main character from the Fountainhead. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah. Oh God! Get some Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand, Ayn Rand. Uh, who died being on welfare, but you know, listen, hey, do what you do what she says, not uh, <laughs> do what she teaches, not what she says. Exactly. <laughs> Got a. 
pull yourself up by your bootstraps. So is there an Randian inspiration to uh, this Lorenzo Dumani production? Oh, I, I have no idea. You know, he 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 was a man of his own making, came from I a feel like rich, 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 rich family. family. <laughs> I didn't look at his Wikipedia page, but I have a feeling there's probably like a controversy section on it. Like <laughs> <laughs> Well, or allegations. The way, the way this movie starts out is very, very uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, it oh, goes yeah. directly into sexual assault. Yeah. And you're just like, what is this? Yeah. Like, you don't get any acclimate. You can't acclimate into the world, it, it, the it's people, It's an uncomfortable the sexual assault because it's done very goofily, like, because it's badly made. Yeah. We, yeah. Keep, we keep cutting. So, basically, there's this woman and John Taylor... And it's a very uncomfortable, like, drinking of wine and kissing. I was 100% convinced it was going to turn into a vampire movie. It feels like a vampire, but he's (laughs) acting like he is a vampire. Yes. He does act like a vampire. His name, by the way, Byron Lord. (laughs) Yeah, which isn't just like a little Easter egg. They they later say, like, you're nothing like Lord Byron. Uh, There's also uh, Dr. uh, (laughs) Stein. Stein? Oh, Mr. (laughs) Stein. Mr. Freeze. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, he's in, like, a smoking jacket. What, they do cocaine and drink wine, and then he, like, has sex with this woman. He has awkward se- and then he... No, he well, brings he, a woman in, and she's yeah. like, she's gonna give you a massage. Yeah, and meanwhile, like, our scared lady, her eyes are, like, popping out of her head. She's really, really uh, And they keep cutting to the same angle of, like, the room. Yeah. <laughs> like, they just... Like we don't understand what happened. It's hard to... It's it's because it's so poorly edited. He So he, he brings a woman in to... Either, mas- either massage her or have sex with her. We're not. It's not clear. Uh, and then he has sex with her. A very, very Pretty awkward awkwardly. scene. Still wearing yeah. his smoking jacket. And there's clothes, yeah. there's a the like fade of like her clothes to her unclothed and holding yeah. hands over her breast. It's like ooh. It's like it's something out of the room. And honestly. then yeah, he's like standing up having sex. It's, yeah. it's yeah, really the sex funny. scene is so uncomfortable because she looks terrified, but it's edited like an erotic sex scene with like camera moves and like yeah. fades and stuff like but that. He's, he's still like fully clothed and she's yeah. like kind of sitting. It's very strange. Yeah. And uh, then so he's like, he orders her to leave or no, she's he, like, I really have to get going. Yeah. He has a shower. No, no. Then... Yeah. He goes, <laughs> I'll be back in a moment. And then she starts to leave, but she's distracted by He's taking a call in the shower on a video camera that's being <laughs> shown on a laptop in the living room. It's very <laughs> no confusing. Sense. I'd and like to take my all my calls from the shower. Yeah, the shower. on a video cam. Yeah, it's very strange. And then that's uh, confidence. You, are you sure, sir? In two thousand one, you'd like us to install the shower cam for you? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. This call. <laughs> maybe, he, uh, maybe he likes he does showers. All his business he, calls from his own shower. Yeah, he loves showers, uh, and it's very high too. It's so kind of it's a high well, he doesn't. I guess he doesn't want to hang dong on the shower. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's, no, it's, it's a high. It's looking down. It's looking so down. You would so. you would be able to see it, but the angle we we don't see his dick. But um, there is yeah. nudity in this movie. Though. And I love how the computer goes from uh, him on the shower to him receiving fifty million dollars and like one of those little bars that moves like it's like a progress bar. So yeah, she she witnesses this. I don't know shady money transfer or something. And I love how he comes out and he's like, oh shit, I forgot my shower cam was on my computer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, so he's gotta, he's gotta kill her because she sees this. Uh, so he's like, oh, let, uh, let my driver take you home. Uh, I get my stereotypical, uh, is he German, suppose, or Russian? No, I driver? think he's, yeah, his Russian driver. I forget his name, but uh, and so it's probably like, like Gustav uh, or, or something. something like that. Yeah, yeah so, uh, oh, we have to make this stop in the desert. <laughs> it's, it's like, like lady, this isn't where I live. It's like, we'll, we'll take your car, don't worry. It's clear what's happening. They take her to the Hoover Dam, the uh, bottom of the Hoover Dam on the, <laughs> yeah, the, on the other of the side. Hoover Dam. Uh, Did you notice that she's like, no, please, don't kill me, don't kill me. And then he's like, a call for you. And she goes, hello? (laughs) She she like strains herself up a little bit before she takes the call. Yeah, and it's it's him on the phone. He's like, oh, goodbye, my dear. Um, Very, the brightest, (laughs) the brightest area of the Hoover Dam. It's like, yeah. But they keep those lights on at night. Well, I'm thinking, you know, it's like you want production value. I was saying you get the Hoover Hmm. Dam in the background. This is like one of like... 
10 sets in this movie. I yeah, mean, there's it's like not, three locations. There's not very many locations. Yeah. So we keep going back to the same locations. Um, but the rocks look nice, I guess. Yeah. But they, they inject her with heroin and then they say the cliffs. I'm like, there aren't any cliffs at the base. No, of well, this Dam. is the hole to the center of the earth that they dug. <laughs> yeah. They throw yeah. her off. This is the funniest, like, green screen you've ever seen. And it's, <laughs> it looks like the background is like I don't know what it is. It looks like an iceberg or something, but it looks it looks like a really bad miniature. It's a good way to start the movie. Um, they should have just had her keep falling through the credits and the they keep credits. cutting back. <laughs> she's still falling. <laughs> yeah, I mean clearly they had a green screen and a wire, and you know she's going whoa, she's moving her arms around. Like you really have to see it. I mean it's like it's. Would a, would a dummy shot have been better? No, because nah, then she couldn't funnier. have been falling forever. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really funny. But yeah, we we cut to I don't know uh, Joe Dom Baker and his his daughters at their house for Christmas. Do you know the daughters' names? It's uh, red hair, blonde hair, shorter, taller, blonde hair. Yeah. I think one of them's named Brenda. I don't know which one. <laughs> yeah, short blonde hair reporter, long blonde yeah. hair singer, um, uh, brunette with giant head, psychic. Yeah, yeah she's psychic. psychic giant girl. head. Whoa, rough. She, Sorry, but she has a really big head. She that's was, how she that's why she's psychic, I guess. I call him <laughs> She's got a big like, brain. I she's got a bigger brain than most people. She looked like uh, uh the Judas character from SNL that Kristen Wiig played. She, she also kind of looks like three, Jaxia Dax. One of the three uh, singing sisters, and then she had like the small baby arm and like a giant head. I honestly don't remember her having a big head. All I remember are the baby hands. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the funniest part. And I, I have never watched SNL in my life. Oh, I'm really? Man. No, that's a uh, lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Joe Don giving a very good performance in Joe this Don movie. Joe Don still alive as we record. This is in, that's, that's insane great. to me. He's great. He, he's great in this scene. And he's I was I was just like, you're movie. too good for this movie. Joe like, Don. what is this movie? We don't know. But he's just like, well, first of all, they go to his uh, door and they given the sad news that his daughter has been found dead and he has a heart attack this is this is when i was crying laughing <laughs> he's like it's it was a good so, performance well it's so obvious that it's just a contract thing that you have you only get me for a day and <laughs> you I have him for yeah. a day <laughs> we thought like he was like going to be dead or he'd be in a coma the rest of the movie not true. He's in he's a in hospital. A, he's, he's in like two or three more scenes after this. Yeah. Mostly in a hospital All bed. shot yeah. in the same day, guaranteed. But oh, it's oh, yeah. just, they, they said, oh, is he in a coma? And uh, the doctor says like, no, it's a, uh, what was it? It's an induced coma. And I was like, it's a contractual coma. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he can't be in the rest of the movie with you. <laughs> Uh, it's just so funny. We, we also learn that those liars at CNN record their things not live to air because the reporter shows up. Yeah. The yeah. reporter played... So one of the uh, daughters is a re- reporter played by Erica Oleniak. She was from, in Christmas from Rush. From Baywatch. Oh, and she was Christmas in Christmas Rush? Rush. Rush. Yeah, she, she was the, yeah. the wife. Makes, she has wild uh, arm tattoo sleeves. I was looking on Instagram. Yeah, I Googled it. it. Yeah. I didn't know that. They go all the way down and like Is that, is that why she wears uh, sweaters in every scene in this movie? I don't Maybe, think, yeah. I have a feeling she didn't get them until like later. later Probably yeah. not. Yeah. And we this skip that um, the body is found by the classic oh. hus- uh, the father-son scene of Christmas fishing. <laughs> In, yes. in the weirdest houseboat I've ever seen. This At is, the bottom of the Hoover Dam. At the bottom of the yeah. Hoover Dam. This is the ugliest fishing houseboat I have ever it's seen like in my life. It's like a front porch boat. It looks like they cut off a house and dropped it in the water. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. it looks like it's half sinking, first of all. It's, yeah. just a, it's just a box. And then it has like a banister, a wraparound banister with like posts, banister posts like all around it. It is so fucking ugly. I've never seen anything like it, to be honest. Yeah, it's weird. It's hideous. And then, uh, yeah, they're fishing as you do on Christmas, uh, and then her body pops up. Uh, but then yeah. we go to the star of the film, <laughs> the coroner, Mr. Freeze himself. This is, I'm like, what is happening in this movie? Well, because it pretty, seems like a serious movie, this kind of. So... And then this comic character comes in. Wearing like, a serious stuff. Like at one point, he goes, "We found semen in her love canal." Yeah, yes. he's cracking jokes, and if you notice, they pepper in 
Elvis song titles in his dialogue. <laughs> I did not. He loves Elvis. Yes. <laughs> so, I thought maybe you wouldn't notice, Justin. Um, I didn't notice. Because I'm yeah. not a big Elvis fan. He has uh, he has Elvis's bones in the corner. <laughs> I did notice that. Uh, <laughs> skeleton dressed like Elvis. The, he says like he's he's out of studying genetic engineering and he wants to bring Elvis back to life. Very inappropriate for this scene, but he's, first of all, he's dressed exactly like Dr. Freeze from like the Batman TV series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the 60s TV The TV series. series, not the movie. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, so like every he you gotta listen for them, but he says like, "Oh, somebody loved her tender before like she was murdered." Yeah, uh, so and so was at Heartbreak Hotel, blah blah blah, and then like later on in the movie, oh, he died in a jailhouse rock. Da, da, da. Oh, uh, I heard him say jailhouse rock, and I was like, eh, well, "Why is he saying that? That makes no sense." Yeah, he's trying to drop. It's his like, thing. Um, but anyway, so her death is ruled a suicide. Yeah, but the sisters. They don't believe it, especially because she had semen in her love canal. Why would canal. she have sex and then kill herself? What human would do that? <laughs> it's also... Yeah, you're, you, you, you've experienced so much bliss, you just fall yeah. asleep, right? You can't yeah, kill yourself like, after I've, that. I've been with John Taylor from Duran Duran. Mm -hmm. God, does John That's Taylor... It he talks like what can you imagine like he's not doing a voice that's just his mannerisms I'm well sure that's, first yeah. of all i was like uh does this guy really british before i knew he was in duran duran and uh yeah i guess that's just his voice and also he he speaks like verbosely um yeah well i guess like, they're playing i up. need he's to like, like stay here and i shall return like stuff he, like that doesn't he say later that he's related to lord byron I think he just would like to imagine that he is. Um, Maybe. I don't know. A lot of scenes end with him like raising an eyebrow and then just holds <laughs> on him before the next sequence. I think, again, it's like, why is he in this movie? Well, why is this uh, this man in this movie? And it's, and he's like loving it. Well, he's it's, he's he's it's he's, it's I a cheesy performance. I feel like him and Dr. Freeze are like in a completely different movie. A yeah. way more entertaining <laughs> The movie. other women are in like a lifetime and movie. All the women, yeah, exactly. They're so boring and terrible. They're in an episode of Passions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of them was in Passions, I think. Oh, were they? Oh, the, man, one of them I'm looking at her head like, now. You're right. Huge. It's like half her face. They're all... <laughs> she needs bangs. They're all like so interchangeable and like <laughs> yeah. generic and... I got so confused anytime they would cut to the blonde one singing because I didn't know if it was the same actress. Like I, they're they're just so generic. And at one point they're like they visit Joe John Baker in the hospital. Yeah, and, and Joe Don Baker is like, please take vengeance on your sister. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I want to stay alive enough to bury this man. And then they're all wearing like the same sweaters, like yeah, it's just different colors, identical sweaters, just different colors. And it's like they went, you know, they had a sale at J.C. Penney's or something. Maybe and it's then, their Christmas sweaters. Maybe. I think some families do that. Not a, not a Christmas. It was the style movie. at the time. Well, first of all, like the uh, when she, they're first setting up for Christmas <laughs> in the very first scene, she has like a gigantic Christmas tree, and it's like adorned with like trumpets, li life-size trumpets, like not like trumpet. <laughs> Wait, what? They're not quite life-size. Well, they're they're like not like ornaments they're that really, look like trumpets. They're, really they're actual trumpets. They look like <laughs> like you could you could just a grab it and play smaller. it. A little smaller. Um, by the way, Justin, this is technically a Christmas movie, I so guess. you got to yeah, include this. I will on not the be next playing this <laughs> movie marathon. <laughs> oh come on! It's got everything: psychics, Jodan Baker, Jodan, ghosts, um, Doctor Freeze. Oh yeah! Dr. Spoiler alert: There's a ghost that shows up at the end of the oh, movie. Oh, maybe there's too much nudity in it. You'd have to black a, a whole there's, scene out. Yeah, there's a little bit. So the the psychic big head one goes to visit the dad and son at the hoover dam the well she's just the at the hoover dam but well, she's yeah, there she's to investigate visiting. but yeah. she's getting psychic visions out of nowhere because yeah. yeah unprompt like later on they seem to indicate like oh you know she touches something then that's then her she'll sister have a vision. touched it yeah yeah this is out of nowhere and you in april you were you were like no she's just having She's imagining something. Yeah, or whatever. I it, it didn't really um, like demonstrate psychic yet. Uh, that's how confusing this movie is. <laughs> yeah, but Justin, you described it first as like Charlie's Angels meets the X Files. Mm -hmm. So I was like, no, she's this is the X Files part. Like she has to be experiencing psychic visions. Or maybe um, 
the the dead sister who's a ghost mm. is sending her these these visions no because, because earlier on they say mom had the same vision <gasps> oh okay oh my yeah. god and okay. it only and it only happens to the one sister so yeah only yeah. the one sister because of her big brain her gigantic brain <laughs> once in a generation it's very weird when she gets the visions like her head like throbs <laughs> <laughs> Like those uh, people on Star Trek? Yeah. <laughs> and from The Simpsons, the itchy and scratchy episode. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the the rest of the movie is just them going from scene to scene. It's a mystery. Um, yeah. They're trying to unravel the mystery of who killed their sister, which is kind of annoying because we know who did. And then we're also seeing Byron Lord... Um, just living his life normally. Yeah, um, it's, it's very doing strange. doing mean things, bad they, things. They kind of investigate like all on their own. So like Eric Eleni- Eleniak is the reporter. So they, they you know she's up. got to tell yeah. the one is psychic and the other <laughs> one is just like a showgirl singer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she does go, nothing. They go visit a uh, strip owner played by Steve Rossi. I'm not familiar with him, but I see here he was like a famous comedian discovered by Mae West. Well, oh. cuz I was like that guy has to be someone, right? Yeah. Well, first of all, Paul Winfield shows up. Oh yeah, a uh, big actor, you know, or he's a name actor. Well, if you know Star Trek, Star Trek yeah, is coming up a in, lot in this episode. He was in yeah. Wrath of Khan. Yeah. Um famously shoots himself in Wrath of Khan. Yeah, and he's been in other stuff. Uh, yeah, Paul Winfield, big actor. So he shows up as like a I don't know he's like a financial I investor. He for like Byron oh Lord. he's the, the guy hotel. that he's like uh, they used uh, we lost fifty million dollars we'll have to write it off. Yeah yeah he's like his uh, Byron Lord's accountant or something. I like thought that. he owned the hotel. Ah, who knows? I don't know. Who knows? You know what John uh, Taylor looks like? He looks like he's he's like. Jim Carrey doing a Tom Cruise in Interview with the Vampire <laughs> impersonation. Well, you know what I said? I said Sam <laughs> Sam Rockwell. He looks yeah, a lot like Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. Yeah, so and Jim I said, Carrey like, doing a Tom I Cruise. I said a little like Dan Stevens thrown in there. <clears throat> sure. So there is one really funny scene where one of the sisters goes to, uh, I guess, like a hair salon. Yeah. And for some reason, trying to get information on her sister and who she does. So I guess she knows like the hairstylist, but they're discussing like her sister's death as she's giving someone a haircut. <laughs> That's like a, I think they do that on Law and Order all the time. Yeah, like they I mean, never stop the job that they're doing. I'm just like looking at the person, like getting the haircut. Like this is, this is so. Do you know that Kevin Smith was once one of those guys in between the guys? Just on a random episode of Law and Order. Really? Was he like a fan or something? Yeah, he's just a fan. He's like, can I be on Law and Order? I don't even want to be a main guy. I just want to be like the guy that leads him to another guy. That must be amazing. Sure. It's like, he, didn't he do that in like Degrassi as well? Oh, well, he was yeah. The he, star of Degrassi was like, with Jane Silent Bob <laughs> visit yeah. Degrassi. He's like, I want to be on Degrassi. So they did like a whole like season long arc with him. No, no, no. It was like it was three like half, episodes. It was like half. His, wait, and then he, he, come, he came back a couple times too. He did? Yeah, it was like, so he was filming a movie on, Degrassi in in the show, and then the 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 movie premiered, and he came back for that too. Oh, okay, um, it was like three episodes, four episodes. And they were like, it and was they, bad. No, and it's then like Smith he got movie. to make out with the girl he had a crush on, like from the Ew. original Degrassi, Caitlin. Oh, yeah, the original Degrassi. Yeah, sorry, not the a... <laughs> not the yeah. young kids. He but. probably like directed a few episodes or something too it must, uh, he be, did. It yeah. must be nice it's just like hey i'm famous hey i like this show uh make a call i want to be on well it. if it's the canadian tv show degrassi i think it's very easy <laughs> i feel you call them up and you're like hey i show up on red letter media they'd be like right this way sir <laughs> that reminds me of a story i heard about uh kevin smith and seth rogan because when he was making zach and miri make a porno he like saw him and knocked up and he was like that guy is you know gonna do big things i wonder if he would like want to be in my movie and then seth rogan was like well when i first came to hollywood i i my agent asked me you know what kind of movies would you want to be in and he's like uh I, i've always wanted to be in a kevin smith movie and his agent was like yeah like you can do that, like, that <laughs> yeah. that's that's very like, easily gettable bad. <laughs> like real bad but well, you can be in it and then he want. was a fan yeah he was a fan so he and was you'll allowed get, to be in uh, kevin smith addicted to marijuana which will destroy his life oh for the no, next, no. Uh, i have a feeling that uh, years uh, seth rogan would never never pick up the phone now <laughs> if kevin smith called no i'm too busy I'm he's, making he's pottery. Too busy making pottery. Yeah, <laughs> he's making, on like a pottery making pottery show. He's like a producing, and I'm executive producing yeah. Invincible, and I don't know, Preacher. It lasted like four seasons, way and, longer than you'd expect. And the boys. 
Is he still involved in that in any way? Uh, not that I... Well, he's the executive producer of it, I guess. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. At, no, uh, he probably yeah. has like zero involvement. <laughs> but just gets those paychecks. Um, Big so Kevin yeah. Smith fan. We have a, yeah, so the awkward, hair, air, awkward haircut. And then we go to the, yeah, the comedian you were talking about. But uh, this takes place at the Fireside Lounge. So we've been to Vegas a, a number of times. place we time. tried to get into, but we yeah, never did. It's the Pepper Mill Fireside Lounge. Why and not? Why weren't you able to get into? They're having a private event. Yeah, so oh. twice, Maybe they're shooting this movie. We, we tried twice. <laughs> 2001? <laughs> yeah. It's like a haunted place. They're always shooting Vegas it's, City of it's Dreams. Amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It looks like this 70s like bar. It has like a sun sunken fire pit with like a with fireplace water and pools yeah and pool like trees and they have Are there a lot of nude women as in this scene i don't think so i don't think it's a strip club but it's uh they were making it look like a strip club for this movie but although the halo is like hey they they look they don't touch at my at my it's a very weird like uh pro uh being a stripper which is fine mm-hmm. but it seems very uh not true coming out of the mouth of this guy who's like hey they get to take control of their lives uh they make a lot of money too it's a great uh investment well maybe that's many how the of, director like met his wife <laughs> many of them yeah. are wives and mothers it's fine no it, <laughs> there's like, nothing wrong with you being gotta a look and but... don't touch but then the scene ends with him like making out with one of the strippers, no no he so. like hugs like one oh. of the naked girls but like, like yeah fatherly. it's like you just said uh they yeah. don't touch but also like uh you know it's not very true to the the, the reality of being a stripper. Yeah, and he's like, any of them do anything illegal. I don't care what it is. They're out of here. It's, yeah, yeah right, it dude. seems like 100% like the wife was like a sex worker. Well, or you know what's what's legal in Vegas? Prostitution. Yeah. So that's technically not illegal. So Wait, is it legal in Vegas? Um, yeah. They I have don't like, think so. I think they have to go to a brothel, though. No, it might just be Nevada. Yeah. Right, it is, because that's uh, the best little whorehouse in Texas. Yeah, they have like the chicken yeah, yeah. ranch or bunny ranch or I don't know what it's called. But <laughs> chicken ranch. I think something like that. But uh, It uh, might have to be only legal if you go to a, a, an establishment. But right? I remember yeah. we were we were on our way to the Pepper Mill and, we were t- and our driver was saying like, oh my God, it's, it's really fun. At the start of the night, I think he said at like 11 p.m. or 10 p.m., all the pimps and prostitutes show up to mm-hmm. the Fireside Lounge. That's the start of their night. And he's like, yeah, you see all like the money changing hands and then all like the women get up and leave. It's like the start of their shift or something. But yeah. they all start at the Fireside Lounge for some reason. And so, then we went and it was a private event. We yeah, get. it was like a corporate event or something. Yeah. So It wasn't like the pimps convention. It could have been. It could have been. Yeah. Uh, da, da, we well let's try let's try again third time is the charm i mean you guys love vegas Vegas, as you said many times on this uh yep and uh hopefully we'll be going back soon the big bucks (laughs) put it down you're gonna see carrot top oh yeah carrot top carrot top no uh i don't know could you convince the people that you may or may not be going with to go see that show Maybe. No. No. no, no. Don't so? I don't think so. I think it would uh, just be okay. miserable. I do want to see like a bad Ve- <coughs> Vegas show. <laughs> you know. I mean, Carrot Top would be a good Vegas show, but you yeah, know, you could eat. It's, it's weird because I like I Googled worst show in Vegas, like yeah, you know, whatever. And there is actually a show called The Worst Show in Vegas. Ugh. Now it's like self-aware. And it's though. like now they probably just capitalize on people googling worst show in Vegas. Yeah, I like, mean, come on! I want to see like a desperate, like you know, magician who's like terrible. <laughs> well, I'm sure unfortunately, we can find it. did you guys hear about the David Copperfield thing? Uh, Which thing? <laughs> well, so he's been doing a show for. I mean, oh my God! Carrot Top tickets start at fifty three dollars. Oh God, that's kind of a lot, and that's probably yeah. like the worst seats. Yeah. Uh, are there any good seats for a carrot top show? <laughs> yeah, there are seventy-seven people looking at this show right now. How? How? I don't know. Hey, he's, he's like still the king popular. Of Vegas, he is the king of Vegas. People see him nonstop, which is baffling to me. Uh, it's Vegas. Yeah. So David Copperfield show for the last like ten years involves him uh, teaming up. I think I've, we've talked about. We've this talked about before. it. It's like an alien. An alien voiced by Ron Paulson. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, You're we've like, mentioned it's this. Love, David. <clears throat> love. Oh my God. I'd see that, but that's also. Probably probably insanely expensive yeah uh, uh look up I, his is, uh, wikipedia he like, and, uh, there were some it. allegations that came out recently <laughs> yeah, right there was, Where, well there was like a kind of uh he had his own like epstein island kind of thing oh yeah. dear god yeah i don't know yeah. these were allegedly mm. these are where these uh, uh assaults took place repeatedly contact by jeffrey epstein oh, uh denies 16 women's misconduct allegations yikes 
Yeah. So we're not going to be seeing him in Vegas. Anyway, yeah. Um, but no. yeah, this movie, so like this is like the only like Vegas like location, I guess, other than the Hoover Dam in the whole movie. Like they don't go anywhere to have the big, you know. Well, Byron places. Lord is in a very opulent. Uh, they were in hotels. Kind of Vegas. Yeah, but penthouse. they don't even look real. They look like sets. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it were CGI. That rule. What am I watching? Megalopolis? <laughs> well, it's like, <laughs> um, uh, Erica Eleniak goes to this car garage. I don't know. She's This disgusting car garage where the guy's wait, a Wait, wait. I don't want to skip over the fact that there's a giant shot of uh, Byron watching something, and you're like, what is he watching? And then it pans over to the singer singing on a stage. Oh, yeah. And there's no one in the audience except for him. And when she's done singing, a woman comes and takes away her microphone right away. <laughs> I thought that that was an audition or something. Yeah. You know, and like then, when Vanity did that in Axe and Oh, that's right, because he's running the hotel, right? Yeah. yeah. He's kind of clapping, and then he like comes down and is like, oh, you're such a wonderful singer. But she's singer. singing like a religious song about God, but it's like a, a Vegas showgirl kind of style production. <laughs> yeah. It makes they, no they sense. They show at the end, and she's with like angels and stuff like angels that. Angels in bikinis. It's right. <laughs> Like, what's I mean, happening? Listen, you can have a little skin with your god, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thou shall not uh, not get sexy, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. Erica Lenny goes to this car garage, and I, I, I guess she's, like, scoping out people her sister, I don't know, associated with. But there's, like, these two guys, like, smoking there, and one guy has, like... Probably the I mean, worst facial hair I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe it? I, uh, it's, like an outline of a beard with no beard yeah it's like a goatee that's connected to like the sideburns by like like a lightning bolt made of facial hair like a, li a, li a line of oh, hair sounds pretty cool to me <laughs> he takes her into the back uh, it looked like he should have a parrot on his shoulder yeah <laughs> yeah she takes him into the back office to meet the owner of this also, place also whatever by gunpoint yeah by gunpoint yeah and oh and I mean, this, don't they have the coolest back office with this, those see-through blue IMAX? This office is like, you, you can tell it's real because you would never be able to, you know, set, set, de set design or decorate an office like this. It is like the office of a hoarder, as yeah. April said. It's just like piles of boxes and junk and like pictures. women in bikinis or in lingerie and a lot of around. like native like, american art <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like very odd native american art yeah it's very random <laughs> and then later he's like oh i sell things like ebay what? yeah he's like you ever heard of ebay and he's like well i, I run like seabay you see something that you want i ask and you you get it what does this have to do with the movie at all? It's just like Nothing. a create. It a, a, it's back. a colorful character that we meet along the way, I guess. That's new, new someone who knew. You know what? Gabrielle. Just like life. It's all about the colorful <laughs> characters you meet along the so way. Gabrielle's yeah. the sister who died, who also went by Gigi, and so she was like an escort, I guess. And so. <laughs> okay, no, she's an undercover cop, which I mentioned twice. What? In the movie. What? <laughs> yes, the woman who they died. Mention it. Yeah, when Lord Byron kidnaps her, he's like, she's an undercover cop. And in overdub, at the end, when Joe Don Baker hugs his daughter, you hear him go, well, who knew she was an undercover cop? And then they hug. Oh, my God. What? I somehow missed all that. Yeah. Um, okay, so that <laughs> explains why she became an escort. She was trying to take down Lord Byron. Well, if she was an escort, she wouldn't look so terrified. Yeah, why was she so scared? I don't know. She was okay, a terrible I guess undercover that makes cop. Sense. What? That's crazy. Like she should have had some kind of training then to you, maybe maybe don't get in the car with, with yeah, man who's need clearly going to kill you. More. <laughs> more training. Well, like it's it, they say that Joe Don Baker is like friends with the police, but then later they say he's like an insurance salesman, insurance investigator. Huh? Yeah. Um, I thought he was like a retired cop. That's what I thought. No, so he's too, an insurance but no, investigator. Yeah. Because um, at one point he says like. Girls start carrying guns from now on. You know where I keep them. You know where I keep <laughs> yeah. my guns. And then he says, "Oh, I called so and so at the police department, and he got you all concealed uh, carry permits." Yeah, I'm like that. What? That he just did all that from his hospital bed. So yeah, like that the, can't be legal. I think he's just buddies with the with the cops in Vegas. I wow. guess. Wow. Okay. Wow. So okay, I had no. So there's a lot of things in this movie that. Um, 
uh, are confusing and don't make sense. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention enough. Um, yeah, can we... it is a perfect puzzle box where everything clicks into place. <laughs> well, can we talk so. about the knife sex scene? Because okay, that wait, was wait, wait, very no, confusing. Because we're going to skip over uh, her uh, talking to Dr. Freeze, oh, yeah. where she talks about cloning. And you're like, is, is she going to come back while as, he's as doing a clone? Is she going to come back as a clone? <laughs> while he's performing an autopsy by the way right in front of her just on the slab yeah he gets out like the bone saw and then um yeah but we keep cutting to like medium shots of him and he's i guess supposed to be like looking like he's struggling cutting through bone but it just looks <laughs> yeah. like he's jerking off <laughs> he's like <laughs> and this is when we finally see the skeleton uh that's dressed like elvis in the background yeah and he, he's like you know he could bring back you know our loved ones even the king and it cuts to like you know elvis and, and again like, this is just colorful character it doesn't come to anything and it's so no. out of place uh, yeah, yeah but he's, it, he's, the tone is wrong for this movie. Oh, it's insane. But if everything is out of place, is anything <laughs> in place in the movie? And it's yeah. so like it's so obviously a set because he's got like the kind of it's kind of lit garishly. There's fans like just giant fans yeah, in the background. Yeah, he has like the Ridley Scott fans that have like lights behind them and they're shining through and casting funny shadows. I don't know. It's and just, then the it's, psychic is going to parties, having flashbacks. She meets a uh, great character actor, Tiny Lister. Yeah, yeah, Tiny Lister's in this movie for like one. Scene? One scene, yeah. Uh, no, he's in two scenes, I think. Okay. I think he shows up again later. Yeah, he kind of sees he's her. He's a scary bodyguard. Yeah. As he often played. Did I tell you when I was bowling next to him in Ve or in Los Angeles? I don't think so. What? Really? Yeah, we went to the Universal theme park. There's like a walk. The I don't know. When, uh, when Universal he, City Walk. City Walk, yeah. There's like stores and stuff. But then kind of next to the Hard Rock Cafe, they had like a bowling alley, a really cool bowling alley. Um, and then we were bowling, had like neon bowling or like the black light bowling and they had like Budweiser's you'd order a beer and it came in like a bottle shaped like a bowling pin. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Which is really cool. And I took a few of them. I don't know where they went, but, uh, this is you, a long time ago. You get like a beeper, you go sit at the bar and when your lane was ready, they'd beep you. And then we like went to the uh, bowling lane and then Tiny Lister showed up with his girlfriend and they were bowling right next to us. That's pretty cool. I'm like, I think that's Tiny Lister. And where, like, where would you have known Tiny Lister from at that point? Probably like the Fifth Element, mm. uh, oh, he's in that. Friday. Because he has a huge role in um, The Dark Knight. Yeah, I think that's yeah. what I probably first saw him in, but yeah. I've seen him pop up. He was in Wishmaster 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I think that's him. And then his name because you can see people's names. I think it was like Tiny or something like that on the screen. <laughs> it's my legal first name is Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> what is his name? I don't even know. I don't know. It's something. But he was also played uh, the wrestler Zeus in No Holds Barred, the Hulk oh, Hogan Oh, classic movie. Hulk Hogan picture. Yeah. But I think he... Oh, his name is Tommy. Tommy Lister Jr. Oh, Okay. I forgot. Oh, he, he died in 2020. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't rest in power. Rest in power. Up at the big bowling alley in the sky. Uh, yeah, but I remember my friend uh, Kevin came bowling, and he was like, kind of like trying to gauge his size, but he was like the same size as him. And he's like, ah, oh, hmm. same size as Tiny Lister. Kevin's like six three or four or something wow he's been acting since runaway train the uh oh, shit. classic eric roberts picture still haven't seen that john voight and eric Roberts. very good didn't who, somebody Wasn't got that directed by yeah it's directed by uh, mr tank cash mm. oh no shit andre kozolowski didn't like eric roberts get a uh, oscar nomination yep. for that he did even though he's playing an almost simple jack like role <laughs> oh, get the oscars no <laughs> Okay, yeah. I think I just had a revelation about the knife sex scene that I I didn't understand when I watched it. Okay. Did you see a psychic like vision? Yeah, vision? I did. Please um, explain it to us because I I'm think I get so it. Now. I think I get it now. So, um, Lord Duran Duran is getting a massage by this woman, and then he she says. Oh, I used to work with Gabrielle yeah. on the chorus line, and then that's his motivation to kill her. Yeah, you didn't, I didn't, didn't get, know that. I didn't get that. This is what I thought. So, so then he he starts an affair with her. He goes to her apart or her like shitty house that he mm -hmm. <laughs> he and that he insults, and he gets kinky. So he ties her up and blindfolds her and teases her with a knife. And then he leaves, and another guy, his associate, comes in and pretends to be him mm -hmm. and has sex with her. So we were thinking. 
while we're watching this. Yeah. Okay, he's going out to commit a crime. And he's going to come back. Yeah, and that was like his alibi. Yeah. Right? I was, I wouldn't, was that make, wouldn't that <laughs> make sense? making it so much more complicated. I know, but no. Than it really is. He actually wanted to kill her. Yeah, and but just doesn't want to do it himself. Yeah, I guess he doesn't want to do it himself because. Um, but then, yeah, the guy that they switch out for, he uh, killed the woman at the beginning. Yeah, he's so, his goon. Like oh, he shows stuff. I mean, no, there were yeah. two guys. Oh, okay. It's very complicated as he had to do the setup for it. Yes. Like, why not just send a goon to kill her? Exactly, but well, maybe because I was just like, okay, he th- this is just some random woman he's killing for fun. I didn't okay. understand. This I is very understand. convoluted. But I get it. So he, she she knew, uh, who was apparently an undercover cop, Gabrielle, dead. Okay. <laughs> so, so he wants her dead. Okay. But he wanted to have fun, knife sex, although he didn't fuck her. No, the goon the, is... The goon has sex with and her. And again, <laughs> very, uh, they're both fully clothed, having sex, and then, so he's holding this knife... And then blood just kind like of, explodes. And kind of thrusting. And I'm like, well, that seems very dangerous. You get this pointy knife. Uh, and then blood just sort of comes yeah, out Yeah, so it nowhere. almost looked like it was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> Again, so we're making it more complicated than We were so confused. Because then later they're like, we found semen in her. So in her, <laughs> he, in her love canal. He finished. So uh, yeah. So anyway, the... the the sisters find out and then they're like well obviously this- but first the reporter is driving down the street and she gets uh, yeah. a helicopter two helicopters uh I yeah think. so this is the sister with the short blonde hair erica Elena. yeah she well, gets chased by the russian chase. and this- then she just drives off a cliff it's so confusing the way Again, it's shot is very incompetent. The way incompetent. it's shot and edited is just like, what is happening? It's just a bunch of close-ups. And then, yeah, her car goes off a cliff, and she's smart enough to bail. She rolls out of that car. Yeah, she and, bails, and, and then, it, and then like, it hits an electrical box and explodes. <laughs> it explodes. Which is pretty cool. I mean... I love that the uh, Russian bad guy seems very surprised by what's happening. He's like, oh. <laughs> well, yeah, I hope, okay. hope she wore a seatbelt. <laughs> he's he's there's jokes. no one in the car with him. Who is he saying that to? <laughs> yeah, it's just himself, Just I himself, guess. yeah. He's very, you know, easy impressed by his own jokes uh yeah it's very weird it very confusingly shot it's just like okay what is happening i just put car chase with a question mark in my notes <laughs> and then because after that we then cut to the singer singing with angels in bikinis yeah and yeah then we, like and then we cut back to the woman tied up with a knife to her throat yeah it's like cross-cutting between those two things i guess it was supposed to be artistic uh religious musical question mark but then erica yeah. leniak shows up to the murdered woman's house. Yeah, I think that, yeah, she does. She, she was picks, on her way there, she pick, I think, to question. stupidly, like, picks a knife up off the floor and is, yeah. like, starts... As you do. Starts screaming. And uh, then the cops show just up. Just as the cops show up. And they're like, put the knife down. That goes nowhere. <laughs> so, no, because the next scene, she's like, no. well, they let me off. No <laughs> yeah. problem. It's like, movie. What did it have to I do mean, with anything? At least we got a car uh, crash and an explosion. I guess. Like, I, you gotta have... There has to be, like, some set pieces in this movie sure. some action um, and then we go back to mr freeze's uh lab again. where he's still talking about elvis that he has elvis's brain on him oh no no it was I like a, it's a brain it of was like, like a, a gangster's insane, brain he yeah. said oh that's right he said jailhouse he rock died right in a yeah. jailhouse rock oh god <laughs> and then and so he talks about dna and needing the dna that never comes up does it? no i think it just gives the ladies the idea of getting a sample of Lord Byron's <laughs> blood, which they don't even need. How, how is no. that supposed to prove anything? Uh, the they don't need semen? it because one of them goes undercover and then that's how they know that he's the bad guy. Well, it's also, I think weird. that they were like, oh, the, the so the masseuse who died in the knife sex incident, mm-hmm. she had semen in her and they're like, well, what if we got Byron's blood and tested it against the semen and if it matches, but we as the well, audience know the, it wouldn't the match. The semen wouldn't match because they didn't have <laughs> sex together. No, it wasn't him. But they should have taken it from the sister because they did actually have sex. Yes. Ugh, it's just so weird. <laughs> Again, it's needlessly <laughs> it's needlessly complicated. Uh, yeah. Did you guys notice that in the next scene, Lord Byron gets a letter from one of the sisters? Yes. And the camera does that like backup zoom in thing as he's like, yeah, the dolly he does a dolly he zoom. A dolly zoom. <laughs> While he's just sitting in his living just room, just sitting there reading a letter. <laughs> well, he's, yeah, it's addressed to Lord Byron, and so you realize that this is a sting. They're setting him up. So the psychic woman has to be her because she'll get visions, I yeah. guess, while in his house she pretends to be like an admirer of him or something like that and she's putting on like 
a fakey British accent. Yeah, it's pretty bad, but I guess it's supposed to be bad. I guess. It's funny. Uh, yeah, so she's getting like... He should have heard right through that. He's getting like psychic. Well, he did, April. Oh, right. He did. He knows every... He knows... Uh, somehow knows... Well, I mean, these ladies are not the best investigators. No, so they're all They're idiots. pretty sloppy. <laughs> yeah, so she's like setting him up. So she goes back to his like apartment or whatever. Uh, and then it's kind of like does the exact same... Uh, what am I trying to it, say? It, it recreates the scene we saw at the beginning at of the, the movie yeah. with the he, uh, other sister. He's drinking wine. He's he like does doing the cocaine. Coke. It's like exact same shots. And so she's having these flashing visions um, to the point where like um, he starts to have sex with her, but they don't, I don't know. He's like making out with her and she's flashing to the scared <laughs> the sister and shot. her. And it flashes back and forth comically like, like it's like it's a naked every, gun movie it's like something. every thrust it's, like, <laughs> whoosh, 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 whoosh. it's absolutely ridiculous yeah it's like they push it to an extreme that was very funny and just completely nonsensical but then does he go into the shower again <laughs> i think he just leaves the room he he, he leaves his laptop oh because she bites him and so he's like ow i think he's gonna like get a band-aid okay so she again like no uh, notices the laptop like the sister did yeah it's open to uh <laughs> video footage of lord byron in front of a giant clock saying and doesn't he go, i know who you are wait what do you say like you're out of time why is he in front of a giant clock if he's not gonna make reference to it yeah and it's just a looping like video, <laughs> yeah. video. Like, he's, uh, like, uh, or he's uh, like i know your secret or, or something like that so and he's then, i know yeah. who you are he's on to you are somehow i guess i don't know he knows oh, yeah, but then he comes and then she no 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 yeah that's right but then she says how do you know and he's like i didn't know but now <laughs> i know yeah. It's Wait, like an what? Austin Powers joke because you just <laughs> no he just he just plays that for every woman who comes over because they yeah, all have secrets. It's just so, and it's just, it just creates a an atmosphere of un, unease. Yeah, so he like uh, she pulls her gun out. Of course, he's taking the bullets. Uh, the fakest gun I've ever seen, by the way. It is like, a prop. It like when she first shows it when they're like you know she's about to go on the date. It looks like it's made of play doh or something, <laughs> and like a child has spray painted it silver. Like it, it could be, it could be made of like macaroni or something. We also didn't mention that she's wearing a necklace that has a secret radio in it, so the other girls are listening oh, yeah. in on a comically like large receiver with like <laughs> spinning tape and. It looks like something from a fifties sci-fi movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, but so they're like, "Oh no, what are we gonna do?" And they're like, "We know what we have to do because they're gonna do the same thing that they did with our sister. We know where they're going. Yeah. So they're going to <laughs> Hoover Dam, the, the Hoover Dam cliffs. So they follow them." Um, you know, Russian guy and other guy have her at gunpoint. They take her out. They do the whole same thing. Oh, you have a phone call, and it's Lord Byron. But then he shows up in a helicopter. Yeah, she <laughs> says, "You don't have the balls to kill me on your own." And he's like, "Don't I?" And yeah, shows up from in a helicopter. Uh, again, spotlight. This is would attract so much attention. Yeah, they make it seem like they're in the middle of nowhere. They're landing but... like a helicopter by the Hoover Dam. Yeah, so the ladies show up. There's a big Mexican standoff. Um, and then, um, go, oh yeah, ghost. Lord Byron gets a call. <laughs> he gets his own phone call, <laughs> and it's Gabrielle like, the Hello? ghost. It's from the ghost, yeah, of Gabrielle. And he's like, oh, I killed you. And we're like flashing to like visions of her, and he's like, No, you're dead. And then he, No, keeps, you're dead. He keeps, and then he falls yeah, forever. He keeps yeah. backing. He backs up. up too much. Falls off this magical cliff. And uh, it's the same shot that we saw earlier just with him. It might great. even be longer. It is longer. Yeah. It is longer. <laughs> it's great. It's like multiple. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's pretty great. Okay, so my favorite thing I didn't say it yet is the shower cam. Um, oh yeah, that's great. I'm going to say the knife sex scene because points for at least creativity but also confusing. Uh, but I'm going to say there's a lot of good there's funny scenes in this movie. The Dr. Freeze character, but I think Joe Don Baker's contractual uh, heart attack, <laughs> heart attack had me laughing so long. Also, Duran Duran guy's not bad. It's not oh, he's like he's pretty good. fantastic, but like he's yeah, he's he's kind of funny. Yeah. Like he's 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 hamming it up. I just wish like the women weren't yeah, so boring. They they they're boring. They're not great actors and they're not like so bad. It's hilarious. They're mm -hmm. just kind of bland. I do wish like the psychic girl's head would like throw and pulse. Yeah. Um, and then to, as or grow longer, yeah, it would be like an air bladder. It's elongated. Like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> boom. Uh, and at the end, we all get the, um, the, the nice finale of the dead sister showing up as a ghost. Yeah, and then after that, they're at the cemetery burying her, and they all have a big group hug. Yeah, Joe Don and the three survive, and he no, he says like no, they're like so, Dad, who, who is your favorite, your favorite daughter? daughter? And he goes, Well, I know one thing. 
you're all precious. Or I, ha- I do like have that. precious daughters. <laughs> so he didn't answer them. And we have like the worst song. Yeah. I can only imagine that it's it's the director's it's her, wife. Yeah, yeah it's Absolutely. it's really, really bad. And then at a certain point in the credits, it just stops and it's just silence. Yeah, it's a silence. And then it's kind of like almost like audio <laughs> hiss. The movie yeah. wants you to think about what you've just seen. <laughs> It's an odd choice. But, I guess the copy that we watched, which is on YouTube, it's like it was it was just like audio hiss after I could yeah. hear like hisses and pops. So we stopped watching. She is <laughs> terrible. Singer. Well you didn't want to see at the end if uh Dr. Sigmund uh <laughs> Stein brings to life Elvis. Yeah, yeah there could have been a uh He should have done like a yeah. rap or something in the in the credits. <laughs> That would have been good. Like canted angles in that one so, location. Yeah. <laughs> I, is this movie like, has this movie been seen by anyone? That's, that's wait, 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 wait. Oh, I see here in the credits, it says VIP casino manager Gary Marshall. The <gasps> Gary oh Marshall. I'm Gary Marshall. I'm a casino manager. Um, but yeah, this movie, yeah. Has anyone seen this? Like, But you, Justin, you said 100,000 views on YouTube? 108,000 views. That's insane. Yeah. Um, so maybe a, some other podcast has covered it or something because I don't think so. I think it's just John Taylor fans who are watching it. It could be. Maybe. You're absolutely right because you know how many people are obsessed with Duran Duran, millions upon millions, and they were probably like, he was in a movie and he has mm-hmm. sex and I have a crush on him. Like that's probably very, very likely. Good point. A friend of mine was in a Duran Duran video. I may have mentioned this. Was before. he? I yeah, think it he was. Did. I think it was the Reflex. If you look on YouTube. Um, is he like in the background it's like a concert video um, the reflex is an only ch- and then like <laughs> water they, they're kind of singing in front of this giant screen at a concert and then the screen like uh, water comes out of it but they haven't is that the one where he almost no that's another one it, where he almost drowned right oh no no so this is like a, just a concert and I think it was shot in Toronto okay. when they were here and they were asking apparently the uh, guest on this podcast paul brown knows mm. him. um his name is peter del Peniotis, director of the nut job the animated the movie. animated nut job <laughs> i think they're telling the audience we're gonna get some reaction shots of the audience like just dance like an idiot or whatever and mm-hmm. he or just you know play it up like dance like crazy and he's dancing like a moron he like stood on the chair and like did the twist or something so there's like a two that guy looks like a nut yeah <laughs> we should give him some kind of job show me this show me this video uh after we record maybe yeah. i'll clip maybe i could clip it's it it's just like uh, a one and a half second i can clip, clip a something. little screenshot and put it in here of your yeah. friend in a duran duran video just dancing like a total idiot like as a joke and then they put it in the video <laughs> of course because they're like hey tech ca- catches the eye get that guy yeah yeah. Um, so there, there you go. Okay, so this movie, as we said, is on YouTube. The whole thing, and uh, mm. it's not great quality, but I mean, it's fine. It's the quality a, the movie deserves. Well, there's a lot of um, uh, interlacing, but you kind of get used to it, right? Which makes me to believe yes. that this must have aired on TV at some point, right? Because it's four three, or it that it was <laughs> a PAL release, and that's why it's. Interlacing and they yeah. like converted it back to 24. Yeah, but it's out there if you want to watch it. Yeah, check it out. I it's, enjoyed it, you guys. It's kind of fun. I uh, mean, it's not great, but I mean, it's no dead again, one of April's no, favorite no, movies no. of all but time. We haven't, but done, we haven't done a, an obscure van- yeah, vanity a project a in a while. It definitely has been a while, so we can't just keep doing the big, the, the big boys. We got to give the little <laughs> like guys <dead> again. <laughs> the dead again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got to give the little guys some attention, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this movie's funny. I highly suggest you watch it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you, why did your head throb? When, oh like, God, I'm having when a you vision. Said that. <laughs> I'm having a psychic. I vision. highly suggest you watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to email the podcast, we're at no such thing as a bad movie at gmail.com and we're on Twitter and Instagram at no such thing pod. And consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash no such thing is a bad movie. If you subscribe at the five dollar level, you'll get a bonus episode every two weeks weeks where we talk about uh, mostly new movies and we also take questions from the audience and there's commentary tracks and over a hundred of these mini episodes so consider joining uh next week we're talking about challengers the luca guadagnino movie that is about sexy tennis i'm i'm gonna say right now we barely talked about that's not true we talked about that's it. not true and you said that and i made sure we talked another four minutes about <laughs> really? it. really we talk about yeah. uh, well lots of things tennis um uh yeah. george, boy love george Manga. Uh, boy love george lucas so we get we get into it <laughs> yeah uh one of us makes a grievous mistake <laughs> yeah about uh about who- <laughs> which uh, star wars character he's talking about <laughs> so and it was really funny so check that out 
a, a Greedo mistake? Yeah, I could probably squeeze a general that in. grievous. Oh, I know. My God. I, I went with grievous because uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if you know uh, Watto you're talking about, <laughs> Justin. <laughs> there and you if, go. If you want to find me, I, Look, I'm, it's classic Greedo Watto uh, mix them up. It's like the Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> oh no, what? Bill Pullman. <laughs> Bill. Uh, Bill Paxton. Bill you guys Paxton. are teasing yeah, it, okay. and then you just gave it all away. Um, so if you want to find me, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at April Atmansky. You can find me on Twitter at uh, DeCluj, D-E-C-L-O-U-X, letter J, or every week on the Important Cinema Club. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Sergeant Zima, S-G-T-Z-I-M-A. We're also on YouTube, so check us out there for funny visual references. Oh, yeah. Maybe you can put the, the reflex. I will video. if I can find it. You'll, I, you'll have to point it out f- yeah. for me. And uh, Did you work on the nut job, Colin? No, no. I know many friends oh. did. Oh, but not you. He's directing... Uh, a movie coming up with Dan Aykroyd and Chevy Chase. Oh my God. A live action movie? Live action movie. I think it's called like... No, wait. Is that the zombie one? Yeah. Was it called like... It already came out. 2023. <laughs> what? Did oh, it? Oh boy. Yeah, it did. Is it called like Zombie Town? Zombie Town. Okay. Oh, you totally missed it. Oh. Oh, your friend directed that? Yeah, he had Oh some... wait, he also directed Gnome Alone. I remember seeing yeah. that. Alone. That's like an animated uh, gnome movie. It's a Netflix film, Garden I think. Really? Gnome. Garden Gnome. Oh, and Gotta Catch Santa Claus. He directed that as well. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I mean, I've never, I've never heard, heard, heard of it. But... <laughs> uh, Nuts and Robbers. I'm guessing that was the... A Nut Job what? sequel. He did yeah. a... Uh, no, he didn't, he didn't come back for the sequel. I No, he did no. a short film that eventually became the nut job that might, yeah that nuts might and be. robbers i think oh or maybe it's surly squirrel that was 2005 so that sounds right yeah the nut job coming soon to no such thing as about i would never no, no i don't think I'm, we can I do it never do that Colin's friend who directed yeah. i'm sure it's a great movie mm. um i love oh, squirrels so we're gonna spend yeah. like oh we didn't uh did that one got a big push in canada didn't it the nut job i remember seeing posters I for think it so, yeah. i saw lots of like commercials and stuff it was very mm. funny because it was like a korean owned animation company uh, that was yes. that was running an operation here, mm. uh, so it was just very funny. I don't know. Whoa! Look, listen to this cast though: Will Arnett, Brendan Fraser, mm-hmm. Liam Neeson, Catherine Heigl, Stephen Lang, Maya Rudolph, oh my Jeff God. Dunham, oh my God. Gabriel Iglesias. Gabriel Iglesias. Oh. One movie I want to, I, I, we have to do for this podcast that the world has forgotten. Remember the one where Will Arnett is like in, has a talking dog, and they have to go to a dog show. Oh my God! And they God. cut the ending of it after it already came out because no. it was like. A joke about abuse at the end. Oh, oh my that's god! Right. No, I don't. I don't know this Wait, movie. Will Arnett talking? <laughs> Will dog. Arnett I'm talking dog? It. It's like uh, it's not best in show. It's like show, show dog or something like that. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe I have heard coming of soon that. to yeah. the. Uh, oh my god! No, the chick is a bad movie. Oh, Gabriel Iglesias is in it. Uh, uh, <laughs> he has an all wait. dog or nut. He's also in the nut job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's not even a voice actor. Uh, anyway. What the hell? Um, is he the son of he's Julio the f- Iglesias? Wait, wait, wait. Gabriel so the, Iglesias? Wait. Oh, wait, no. So the joke about show dogs is that he has to go undercover and he's a cop dog at a dog show. Oh. Guys. The cover is like a dog with like sunglasses okay. and a police vest So on. he probably makes a joke about like police brutality or something at the end. Oh, no. It's like, uh, I think he's like, think happy sauce because they, they have to cup the dog's balls at the end of the oh. movie. It's like part of being a show dog. Guys, Gabriel Iglesias is a comedian. He's not related to Enrique or Julio Iglesias. <laughs> okay, I thought that I, would be okay. weird. I think. Oh, okay. I know him He's now. that like overweight yeah, yeah. Um, a comedian. Oh, okay. That, uh, sorry. That, I'm like, we're getting things. The son of Julio Iglesias yeah. <laughs> shows up in two. We're getting things completely wrong dogs. today uh, all over the place. So anyway, thank you for joining us. That's it for this week. Uh, what did we talk about? Las Vegas, City of, of Dreams. <laughs> Who am I? No, it's just called Vegas. Sorry, city you're Greedo. Of Dreams. Well, you're Greedo. Vegas, City of Dreams. <laughs> uh, I'm in a city of dreams right now in my brain. Uh, I'm April Atmansky. I'm Justin McClue. I'm Colin Cunningham. And remember, there's no such thing as a bad movie.